Thank you very much, Marty. Uh, thanks for allowing us the opportunity um, to present. So um, we're going to switch to Jay Young. And uh, Jay's a real interesting guy. Uh, Jay has a well-known podcast. He's written a book uh, about mining and oil and gas uh, and just investing in periods of distress. Uh, he's also a member of Tiger 21, so we've been a very successful entrepreneur, multi-generational family in the oil and gas industry. I I'm sure I'm leaving lots out, uh, but Jay's a real personable guy. He's going to be able to talk about all of this. So, uh, Jay, why don't you take it away? Great. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And, and I've got a lot of great people that have been around me, and I, and I appreciate them helping me. And also, hey, I appreciate being here today. Man, a, lot of, a lot of great people I see on the on the screen and we look we look forward to it so just to kind of start off and talking about you know what i do and what yes i do have a podcast i love podcasts i love to my, one of my biggest you know I, what i want to do is when i when i was in high school and college you know i didn't have a good mentor i didn't have somebody that was telling me a guideline of how do you be successful so it's taking me longer i feel you know to, to get on the right track so what I like to do is I like to interview successful entrepreneurs, people that have made good decisions. What did they do? How they do it? And I can put that on the podcast. And I, I've got multimillionaires, billionaires, and everybody that I've, I've, uh, I've uh, interviewed. I don't really look forward to that. And uh, that's just a kind of a side, a side gig for me that I, I really enjoy doing. So, but I did. I wrote a book about the upside of oil and gas investing. And uh, there's right behind me there that you can see that. And it, it's really, uh, it, it was great because there's a lot of different people that invest in oil and gas because it's 100% write-off, but they're investing in the wrong type of project. The model's different. The model's not good. People invest and they don't get their money back, but they go, well, I got, I got some money back. I got a write-off. So, but I wrote a book about it and I'm excited about that. So, but I, I wrote the book after I was on a chairlift with a friend of mine and was in the apartment business and about five years ago here in Dallas, and you know how that's been the last five years, he's killed it in Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Phoenix, San Antonio, man, anybody in apartments has done a really great job. So we, we classified our oil and gas investing just like apartments. You know, what's the exit? What's the scale of building? What's the exit? What are you in it for? So, you know, first of all, uh, thank you for allowing me to be here. My family has been in the business for over 100 years, which is which is pretty neat because, you know, when when we're talking about, you know, going to Thanksgiving and to family reunions, I mean, my great grandfather, A.K. Turner, you know, A.K. Had, had 12 kids, my grandmother being the oldest. And, you know, if you're a man, you're in the old business. And if you're a woman, you're married to somebody in the old business. So we know the old business. I mean, like, you know, that's what we talk about. Wells and, and pumping units and downhole pumps and rods and how do you make a well produce more or less? What is, you know, the whole thing? So it, it's kind of a really incredible, uh, uh, you know, upbringing that I had in Texas, you know, and, and uh, so I have obviously a lot of people, don't know anything about that. You know, they don't know anything about the oil and gas business. So I've been asked to go on Bloomberg and a lot of different places to, uh, to just talk about the oil business and, and give, give people an idea of, hey, it's 100% write off, but there's also a great way for you to make money. Look at our model and how we do it. Okay, so, uh, but today uh, we started King Operating. 1996, uh, as I mentioned, um, you know, I got out of school in, in 85. Oil prices were not great at that time, but, you know, at the, but uh, we finally got in the oil business and I worked for another company for a while and then started King Operating in uh, 96. Started a marketing company for oil and gas projects in 95. So I've been an entrepreneur for, uh, was that 25 years now? Been in the oil and gas business for 30. I did the stock market uh, a few years before, uh, before that. You know, so... One of the things that, uh, you know, when you talk about King Operating, we have the assets. So we own the assets and the investor owns the assets, which is the most important. You know, you don't just own a one well project, you own the assets. And then we grow the assets, like an apartment complex. You know, like, 
like me and Michael Burley, my friend there, uh, buying a business. You know, we buy a business and then we increase the value and then we look to scale it and sell it. You know, we scale it and sell it. You know, that, that's our that's our model. So that's what uh, that's what we do. Now we're gonna talk about alternative investments and the different types. Hi, Jay. Uh, you were, there was an echo. I turned off one of your speakers. Okay. Can you hear me now? It's great. Hey. I've never had this problem before. Echo. Yeah. Are you using the screen okay? I can't hear you. You can or can't? I hear you fine. I got down where this echo is coming from. So just keep on speaking. Marty. Keep on going, Jay. Okay, are we good? Good, okay. We'll talk first about alternative investments because, you know, somebody can obviously have a great stock portfolio, but what we're looking at is we're looking for, you know, what do, what do people look for in an oil and gas investment or an alternative investment? Jesus, thank you, Father. And an alternative investment is real estate, it's, it's energy, it is... Uh, uh, Precious metals, things that you have to, that's outside of your stock portfolio or basically cash, you know, so it's an investment that you made. And, you know, venture capital, collectibles, things of that nature. If you look at uh, the next slide, why should you do, you know, why should you have some alternative investments in your portfolio? You know, well, portfolio diversification. Like right now, there's been a lot of people, me included, that have made a really good amount of money in the market in the past, you know, six months. Well, is it going to continue on? You know, we look at it, obviously, oil and gas as there's three different types of investments. And I know the guys that talked earlier about gold mining, I'm sorry. I, I, we'll talk about gold mining too. We need to have gold mining stocks. We need to have oil and gas. We need to have the stock market. And we need to have real estate in our portfolios. All of us need to have these great assets in here because Man, this is the way that you that lets you diversify, and you at the end of the at the end of um, at the end of the day, at the end of the year, what is it that you want out of your investments, and how can you how can you make money on the long term? You don't want to be all in the stock market and invest in, you know, unless you invested in Apple or Amazon a long time ago, and that was the only stock you had. Man, you got really really lucky. Now is a great time to look at how can we look at a, at a, um, a sell and then put into something else. You know, and I was talking to somebody not long ago and I said, you know, this may be one of our projects about, about what is it that we um, can do. Um, you know, somebody that, that is the way of the future. Alternative investments is the way of the future. Why? Because, you know, you don't want to be only in one, one area, you know, and it's like the stock market. Like there, also, also the tax advantages. You know, there's a great tax advantages in oil and gas. Do you do it for that? No. Give the money to charity. There's a lot of great charity. 22 kill. We we raise tons of money for 22 kill. 22 veterans a year. You know, commit suicide. I donate all my proceeds in my book to 22 kill. That's great. That's give the money. We're not talking about only tax benefits. We're talking about, you know, you need the tax write off and you want to make money what the Joneses and the Hunts do, okay? Now also too, you wanna have multiple exits. 
you know, I don't think oil and gas is going to be here for the next 20, 30 years. It's going to be here. What's the price going to be? I don't know. Do I care? No. Do I care what it's going to be next year? Yes. The next year? Yes. After that, I don't know. And if oil prices go to $100, to $200 a barrel, we're not there. You know, we're not, we're not investing at $100 a barrel. You invest in real estate or the stock market or whatever else is down at that point. Now is the best time to invest in oil and gas because of that. Prices are low. Rig counts down. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Okay. Why is it now? Why is now the best time to look at to look at this? Trade-offs to alternative investments. Longer hold periods. Lack of liquidity. And it's also cyclical. Cycles are the best thing going right now in oil and gas. Buy low, sell high. Current market factors. I wrote this article in Forbes not long ago. And I wrote an article too about the price of oil with the pandemic, March 22nd. I wrote an article and I said, hey guys, oil is going to be at $65 a barrel at the end of this year. And the price was negative. You know, I have all the great timing in the world, my wife says. But no, but I'm just saying that, that the time is right. The time is now. Why? Recount. Look at, there's three factors that tell you what's going to happen. Somebody told me this. They told me, they said, hey, what is the best cure for low oil prices? Low oil prices. What is the best cure for low oil prices? That is low oil prices. When prices go down, the capitals vanished. I read an article last night in London Times that talked about, man, the capital's gone. Nobody's putting money to work in the, in the fields. Look at the rig count. Rig count's going down. It's, there's nobody drilling. This rig count, look at that. This rig count is in a, about 2,000 rigs, you know, at one time. And now it's down to, you know, 176. There's not, and, and only like 150 are drilling horizontal wells. A lot of them are drilling verticals. How did we go from 5 million barrels a day in the United States to 13 million barrels of oil in a short amount of time? Think about that. Less than 10 years, probably about eight years, we went from 5 million barrels of oil a day, U.S. total oil and gas production in the United States to 13. Now we're at 10, going down. Rent counts down. People shutting off wells is down. I'm just talking about, oh, I'm talking about the supply right now. The supply is going down and what happens? The supply goes down because you have less rigs working on the on the wells. Your shell wells that you had at one time that got us from five to thirteen million barrels a day, that has declined rapidly. They decline, so you're going to see a shortage of supply when our demand comes back, which it will. And even if it gets back to 90, 95 percent, I know it's not going to be a, a you know what's the world look like in in a, six months or a year, two years. But when it gets back, it's starting to come back. Our demand's there. We are not going to have the supply. What's going to happen when we don't have the supply? Prices go up. Always happens. Price goes up. Okay? I mean, this is what happens. Russia, Saudi Arabia come back in March, February, go, we're going to dump all this oil in the market in the United States. We're going to drive the price down because we're going to bankrupt all these oil and gas companies that are drilling these shell wells. They did. What happened? Price goes down. Hey, hey, Jay, down Jay can you hear me? Jay? Yes. Yes. So just real quick. So, you know, uh, oil, natural gas, uh, price is low. Development is being reduced. I, I think uh, several companies have gone bankrupt and their assets are for sale. Um, and, and you're right. It, it seems like it's almost always the case that oil jumps back up. Something happens in the Middle East. Um, you know, there's some kind of volatility that occurs. Uh, you know, something happens with Venezuela, et cetera, price goes up. So you don't see any of these efforts in places like California that are moving to, you know, renewables. They're not going to impact the need for oil at all, you think, in, in the short term. Not in the short term. Yeah, exactly. You're not, you will see it in the 2040, 50, you will see this, but not in the short term. We're okay, going to need all the Okay, so secondly, so, so, so secondly, so, so, um, Renewables won't impact short-term oil uh, utilization, but so so we've been living through a deflationary cycle for a pretty long time, I think, um, in terms of you know some generic you know things that we use. 
but I think that we're heading towards an inflationary cycle. I, I, I think people before said that, and I think that's just going to be the case, right? <laughs> so what is, how does oil act in an inflationary cycle? It's going to go up. I mean, because you're going to have a lot more people, the, the demand. So it's all about supply and demand. And that's exactly what happens on the price of anything, obviously, is supply and demand. And, and what's going to happen when, when, the, when the, the demand goes up and that you need more oil and you don't have it, then people are going to reach and go, man, I want to pay for it. I want to pay $60 or $80 a barrel. Or That's why Goldman Sachs has said, you know, it's going to go to $60, $75. You have J.P. Morgan, who said at one time the price is going to go negative, and it did. J.P. Morgan is saying that in five years, well, about four years now, it's going to be at $195 a barrel. $195. And, I mean, assets are going to be unbelievable at that price. And that's what we're doing is we're putting ourselves in a position today to take advantage of that, drill wells, increase the value, and oil prices go up. It's just, I mean, lining all the moons up, which is beautiful. Okay, great. Keep on going. All right. But so anyway, what, what is the difference between, I appreciate the questions. And I know that some people are asking me on my chat about that. And uh, please ask me questions. And uh, so I'll, I'll answer any questions. I love this business. This is the best time. And, and in three years from now, you're going to be looking at Jay Young going, Jay, what's going on? I'm going to go, man, we can't buy any assets at a great price. So we're on the sidelines. If bull does go to... If oil does go to 100 to 120, it's hard to make money. At $40 a barrel, wow. I mean, our asset, we show that, that you know, it's $40 a barrel and it's a break even at 20. And, and, and at 40, it's a 2X. That's where you make money in this market, you know, is buying low, selling high. Let's talk about the, the why King is different or how King is different. And it talks about, you know, acquire, develop, and divest. And this is ADD. Not, not, not your Adderall uh, type of ADD, but, uh, but, you know, it is about acquire, develop, and invest. Look for assets that you can increase the value in a short amount of time by drilling wells in a proven oil field, proven oil field, and, and develop, develop the oil field. We did this before and it took a 400% return in a year. We sold a third of the asset, gave clients back 130%. Go to the website and I'll send you some a newsletter and let you know how that, that worked out. You know, and that's what we plan to do now. You know, so acquire, develop, but the most important is divest. I want to get you income, but also I also want to divest the asset. Once you divest the asset, you're giving people back money. That's what they want. I'd love to give you back all your money plus and then continue sending you a revenue stream. So you can obviously, you know, have, a, have a, a check every month, you know? I still like to get royalty checks in the month and give them to my wife. You know why? Because, well, number one, it's just fun. Do they have Do they have the electronic transfer or whatever you call that deal? Yeah, but do I like it? No. I like to get the check and hand it to her. So it's always fun. All right, scalability. We lease enough land. This is the model that we take. That's a private equity model. It's the big boys game. Investors like you and me and all that can't get involved in this. We have a lot of money in this. We're excited about this prospect. We're excited about this project, but but you can't get involved in a private equity deal. That's for pensions. And so what we did is we scaled it down and said, okay, how can we get investors at 100, 200,000 or 500,000 dollars? How can we get them involved in oil and gas? And so all we did was, and it cost me millions of dollars of my own money to put this project together because I had to go buy the leases and so forth. But I was. I was in there doing this, and that's why I'm saying that that you lease enough oil and gas mineral acreage to drill up to 200 wells. You do that first, and then what do you do? You use equity to go drill and complete wells and get it up to the next level. At the next level, you either decide, oh, we're gonna we're gonna divest all of it, or we're gonna divest some of it. So at that time, you drill it with enough wells, and I love drilling wells. We'll be on a rig this this year. Come out, come out with us and, and go, to the, go to the wells. It's a lot of fun. Monthly income. You know, we send out monthly income to our investors. They, all, they love that monthly income. And you don't have to get a check. I'm just kidding. You, you, can, you can get it transferred to you. We'll send you a statement. Exit strategy. How do you make money in oil and gas? Exit strategy. Don't scale it and don't sell it. Scale it and sell it. 
I, I got that patented, so don't try to don't try to steal it. I got it patented. Scale it and sell it. Traditional only gas prospect. You have one location only. It costs you a million dollars to go drill a well. I did this for years. If you, if you have a million dollars to go drill a well, you, you everybody pitches in a hundred grand. You own ten percent. When the well's dry, you're dry. I mean, that's it. Done. That's not how you make money in oil and gas. You can do it by we seek opportunities to drill minimum of sixty locations. You drill twenty of them, and then you have two offsetting locations, and then you scale it, and then you know you look to sell it. Hey, AJ, real quick question. I mean, yeah. so one of the things about our group is that uh, we like the authentic thing. And since you're from Texas and you're authentic, um, can you talk about the tax repercussions as well as the for the investment purposes? Yeah, right. So we uh, it's a 100% write-off. It's, it's a write-off against your adjusted gross income. And now you'll probably get 70, 80% the first year, something like that. But it's a 100% write-off. So it lowers your tax basis, you know? We put in six hundred thousand dollars on a Permian deal this year, myself personally, my my family, because we wanted to invest in it. But not only because we wanted the income and the we know we see the asset grow and sell, but we also love the write off. You know, we have millions of dollars in this project. It's adjusted gross income write off, so you don't have to pay as much in taxes. So at, at the end of the year, when somebody you know that, that CPA, I don't know what your deal is and how he calls you or tells you what your the deal is. Is it is it um, does he call you and go, okay, well, you owe $200,000 or, or does he send you smoke signals? You know, like my wife, that's what we like to do in my life, send her smoke signals and be somewhere else. Yeah. He tells you, hey, you know what? I have less, I owe less money because I did something with King. People in California, people in Boston, people in New York, you're paying yes. 50, 60% taxes. You love the write-off, don't you? We love we love the write off. Okay, we have we have self directed IRAs. People that invest through the qualified funds. We have a 1031 project right now that you can participate in on the 1031. You can uh, 1031 exchanges. Mario Gallo, yeah, thanks, thanks Mario. Uh, we can do a 1031 exchange with this. So if you're looking to diversify out of real estate, you have you have 30 40 people, or, or let's say you have 30 40 percent. You're identifying two, three properties 